Hello, everyone. Today we will talk about uh, so-called canonical forms. So after this class, we will have our office hours. So if you have uh, any question, um, for example, the installation error um, of Vivado, we can talk about that uh, in the office hour. So canonical form is a uh, method to convert the truth table to a circuit, uh, which is uh, you know, constructed by the CMOS transistors. Uh, you can also convert the circuit back to the truth table by canonical form. So there are two major Uh, canonical form. The first one is uh, mid terms. The second one is uh, um, max terms. Uh, we will also talk about the index representations of uh, mid terms and uh, uh, max terms. The mid term is uh, mainly related to the so called sum of the product, while the max term is actually related to the um, product of the sum. So we will talk about this, these two uh, representations in the following slides. Um, and we will also talk about the representation of uh, complements of a function and the conversion between these two uh, representations. So it's very useful to specify, to define a uh, Boolean function um, by canonical form so that we can actually compare uh, whether two Boolean functions are the same or not. Um, and then we can convert each Boolean function to a truth table. So there are two types of a canonical form. The first one is the sum of the product, sum of mini terms. The second one is a product of the uh, max terms, which is a sum product of the sum. So I will talk about the me term first. Me term are and terms with every variables. And terms with every variables in either true or complemented form. Um, so each binary variable may appear normal or complemented. So in this slide, we use this symbol or this symbol indicate or x bar or x bar to indicate a complement. Um, so totally there are two to n me terms for one n variables. For example, if we have a two variables, then totally we have a, you know four me terms. Both are normal. X is normal. Y is a complemented. X is a complemented. Y is normal. Both are complemented. So there are four mean terms of two variables. So if we have a three input signal, three variables, X, Y, Z. In this case, totally we have a two, two, three, which is eight. And these are the uh, possible combinations of these eight uh, mean terms. So each mean term equals to one at exactly one particular input combination and is equal to zero for all the other combinations. So let me give you an example. If X, Y, and Z are all ones, we have three ones here, only this one will be one. All the other combinations are zeros. And another example is uh, if this one is uh, always to zero, except the um, input combination of all zeros here. 
So I provide the two examples. The first one is all ones. The other one is all zeros. So only one combination can be one. All the other combinations are, all, are zeros for one particular um, input combination. So this one will be referred to M zero. So we have um, a index here. The index here indicate um, the row number in the truth table of this term. Since all these are, you know, um, complemented, so uh, it's the first row zero in the truth table. And if we have a uh, midterm like this, then I is the input combination at which midterm is equal to one. Also, this is the index of the, the row in the truth table. So for a three input combinations, um, again, we have a two, two, three, which is eight uh, combinations. So these are all eight possible combinations. So we list the possible combination for this term to be uh, one and uh, all the other combinations are zero. So in summary, we can know that n input variables has uh, two to n combinations. Um, a me, me term is a zero at all input except of one where the me term is one. So uh, one example is uh, what's the number of uh, me term for a function with uh, five variables? Uh, the answer is a two to five which is the 32 midterms. So when I talk about the truth table, uh, how many rows are there in the truth table? Um, if we have n variables, it's also two to n. So one row of the truth table uh, is uh, equivalent to one midterm. So the second canonical form is the max term. Um, the max terms uh, are all terms. So they, they, this is different from the mid term. This is all. These are also every variables in true or complemented form. So each binary variable may appear uh, normal or complemented. So this is the complemented. Totally, we have a two to n max term. If we have a two variables, this is a two variable case. We have a four uh, possible combinations. These are the four possible combinations. Um, the difference between the mid term and the max term is that here we have all, but in the mid term we have n. Um, here uh, the same point, the same um, point between term and the max term is uh, you must have every variables. So if you only have x, is it a canonical form? No, it's not. A single x is not a canonical, canonical form. A single y is not a canonical form either because these are not, uh, these two expressions do not have every variables. Again, let's talk about a three input case. So if we have a three input signals, um, a term all, and uh, you know, I repeated the definition here again um, to show you all the possible um, three input variables here. So totally we have a two, two, three, which is an eight. Um, combinations, eight um, max terms. So these are all eight max terms. So each max term equals to zero at exactly one of the eight possible input combinations and is equals to one at all the other combinations. 
um, for example, for this max term, only when x, y, and z are all zeros, it's a zero. The value is a zero. Otherwise, if any of them is one, uh, then the output is a one. So this max term is the, you know, capitalized at zero, which is also equivalent to the first row in the truth table. So you can see that both the max term x, all, y, all, z, and the mini term x bar y bar z bar is equivalent to, are equivalent to the first row of the truth table. And these two guys are also equivalent. For one thing, you can have two representations, two canonical forms. One is the mean term, the other one is a max term, but they are equivalent. So in general, you can write a max term like this. A, um, I'm sorry, a, um, a capitalized I with the index. And the I corresponds to the input combination at which this max term is equals to zero. So if this is a zero, then um, in the truth table of uh, row zero, um, you have a zero, output zero. So for a three input system, the possible combination is a two, two, three, which is eight. Um, and this is the, you know, definitions of these eight max terms. So only one, only when, so only when x, y, and z are all zeros, capitalize m zero is a zero, otherwise it's one. So you can see this is a zero, zero, one, and this is one, and this is zero. Uh, for a, a for n input variables, the number of uh, max terms equals to the total number of uh, possible uh, input combinations, which is a uh, two to n. So when the max term is a one, at all input combinations except one, where the max term is a zero. So I talk about. Uh, um, the capitalized M1, M0, and the M, me term M0 here. And I said that they are equivalent. So here I provide the theoretical improvement why they are equivalent. Based on the De Morgan law, you can actually convert this one to this one. For example, X, all y, all z. This is the m capitalized the m zero. Um, when I apply, I'm sorry. When I apply a bar here, um. What I cannot simply apply one single bar. Uh, I have to apply two bars. Otherwise, you get the inverted value. I have to apply two bars here, um, which means uh, the inversion of the inversion of uh, um, capitalized M0. And then you have uh, X bar um, and Y bar and Z bar. And then you have, this one is the mean term, M0. So in this way, by the De Morgan law, I can prove this one.
So each midterm and uh, max term can be equivalent to one row in the truth table. This is row zero, row one, row two, and row three for the two variable case. The index here is important for describing which variable in the terms are true and which are complemented. When I give you the index here, when I tell you which variable, when I ask you which variable in the midterm is a normal and which variable is complemented, you should be able to answer that because this is zero. Um, at row zero, um, the midterm should be equals to one. Why? Because we have this slide. At index zero, the mean term, mean term should be equals to one. Then you have this this guy, because um, when the index is zero, x is zero, y is zero then you know the, the, the midterm like this can be a one. But uh, when you have index as a zero, the max term should be zero. So when I show you the index and tell you um, whether I need a, a midterm or max term, you should be able to um, answer uh, which variable is a zero, which variable is a, um, which variable variable is a normal, which variable is a complemented. Um, and then we can summarize the so-called canonical form. Um, in the canonical form, um, we have a mid terms and a max terms with a subscribe. A subscript. Subscript is a number which is corresponding to a binary pattern. The VC in the pattern represents uh, the complement of the normal state of each variables, least in the uh, standard order. All the variables will be presented in a midterm or max term and will be least in the same order, um, typically alpha beta order. Um, so you can see that. Um, for variable A, B, C. This is the canonical form of a max term and uh, this one is also max term. This one is not a max term because it's not in the alpha beta order. This one is not either. And these are the mean terms. We have all A, B, 3 and they are in um, alpha beta order and uh, this one is not, although it's in the alpha beta order, it doesn't have A, so you must have each variables in the midterm, all max term. And you don't have a C here, so these are not canonical form. The index for the midterm or max term uh, can be expressed as a binary number to determine whether the variable is uh, in true form or complemented form, in normal form or complemented form. So one means is for the midterm, one means it's not complemented, it's a true form. Zero means it's complemented. Um, but we have exactly the opposite case for the max term. Uh, for max term, if it's a zero, then the variable is not complemented. If it's a one, we need to uh, have the complemented form. So here is one example. We have a three variables, x1 and z, and this is the alpha beta order. Um, for the index zero, this is index zero. We have a three variables. Um, all three variables are complemented for midterm. 
no variable are complemented for max term. So the mid term is this this one, and the max term is this one. Let's try um, index six. For the index six, then we convert this six to binary form, which is a one one zero. One one zero is the binary number for six decimal six. Um, so for the midterm, this one, when we have this index, X is a true form, Y is a true form, and the Z is a complemented. Why? Because this is a zero and this is one, one, zero. So we have a true form, true form, and the complemented form. For the max term, the X is a complemented because it's a one. Y is a complement here because it's a also a one. And then Z is a true form because Z is a zero. So this is the case for the uh, index of six. And here are also some uh, questions for you. You can uh, finish the, this table yourself. I leave, I leave four blanks here. You can try to finish this table. This is a four variables case. So by the De Morgan law, we can convert the, we can enable the conversion between the uh, max form and the mini form. So like this. And the max term is, uh, so assume we have the, the same index. The max term is the complement of the mean term. I just show you uh, how to prove that. For example, if you have two variables, this is exactly the, uh, this one is the exactly the max term of the index zero. And then we apply com a bar here. This is the complement um, of the, capitalize the M0. Um, in order to get a M0, we need to apply another bar. Here, another bar. If we have a two bars here, we have the capitalized zero. And then we can continue to calculate the, the right side. For the right side, we directly apply the De Morgan law. So, since we have this part and then we can get this part. And you can see, I'm sorry, this is an end. We can see that this, this part is exactly the small m zero, which is the mean term of the x1. So in this way, in this way, we can prove this just by the law. Now we have the mid term and the max term. The next one is the sum of the mean term and the product of the max term. We need to eat. now we can only express one one row. Uh, in the truth table. Now, with the sum of the mid term and the uh, product of the max term, uh, we can express the entire um, truth table. Not only just one row, but, uh, but the entire truth table. So each mid term has one and only one present in the Two to n terms, all the others are zeros. Each max term has a one and only one present uh, in the two to n terms. All the other entry are ones. So we can implement any function by all in all the uh, mean term corresponding to a one entry in the true stable. 
or function table. These are so-called uh, main terms of the function. We can also implement any function by ending um, max terms corresponding to all zeros in um, all zero entries in the function table. The function table again is a truth table. These are so-called uh, max terms of the function. So in this way, we have sum of the main term and the product of the uh, max term uh, to express any Boolean function. For example, this is a function. So we have actually two functions in this truth table. Um, both functions share the same three variables, input variables, which are A, B, and C. Um, the first function here is uh, called F. The second one is a one. So we can write F like this, and we can also write Y like this. So you can see that the only connection between the F and the G is that they share the same um, input variables, but you can actually, you know, um, break this truth table into two truth table. Um, you can only have the first uh, four column in the, of this table as the truth table for F. And you can also have the first three columns plus the last column of this table as another truth table for G. So you can break this truth table for two. Um, but uh, here for simplicity, I just wrote them together. And then we can have the, you know, all the possible combinations of the three variables. Since we have a three variable, then totally we have a two, two, three, which is the eight rows. Again, um, we should be able to convert the mid term max term and the truth table um, between each other. So this is our goal. We want to design a circuit to implement the function F. We also want to design a circuit to implement uh, function G. In order to have this, these circuits, in order to uh, understand how to use these Simple state to connect together to implement these functions, we need to show the midterm first. The midterm here is uh, the row generator one. So, the, of course, the midterm can be represented by M. Okay, and then we have the sum of M. This is the sum. The sum of each and we need to write out the index here. For function f, since the first, I'm sorry, the first row generator is zero, then we cannot use the first row. We only list all the row can generate a one output here. The second row, yes, because this is one. The third row, no. Fourth row, no. Fifth row, no. Sixth row, yes. Five, okay, because the index here, although it's a six row, the index here is a five, and then the seven row, eight row, and then we list all the uh, rows which can generate a one here, and then we can do the same thing for G. The first step is to show the uh, mean terms, and then we can also express this function by the max term. For the max term, um, the max term is a capital I by. Uh, we need to multiply um, or end all you know rows who can which can generate a zero. So for function f, the first row yes, second row no, third row yes. This, although this is third row, we need to write its index, which is two. And the next row, next row, yes, you can list all the rows who can, which can generate a zero. We can also do the same thing um, 
for the function g. So in this way, you can show the function by the canonical form of uh, max term. In the previous slides, we do the same thing by meter. So basically, you can see the difference. The difference is that uh, for the midterm, we use sum, sum of a midterm. But for the max term, we use a more, more, uh, product of the max term. And uh, for the max term, we pick up all the row who can generate as zero. But for the midterm, we pick up all the row um, which can generate a one. These are the key difference. So we can here uh, for simplicity, we only show the uh, f function case. Uh, we, when we have this expression, we can write this expression like this. For this expression, for this uh, sum of the mid term, um, we have uh, four terms here. And then we list uh, all the possible four terms here. Again, each index here is corresponding to is correspond corresponds to one meter. For one, let me try, let me give you the example. For the for the one, when we try uh, when we convert it to the binary form, we have a zero zero one. Uh, because these are these are the mid terms. Um, x is x bar. For for y, uh, I'm sorry, for a. A, um, we have a bar here, complemented because this is zero. For B, B is also complemented because B is a zero. For C, C is one. Uh, C is a one, and then we can directly write a normal C here, the true form of C here. So you can also you can try the 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 five here, the index five. Five is a one zero one. So you can see only B has a bar, only B has a complemented form. So in this way, you can translate the truth table to the Boolean expression. And since each meter is a product, so this method is also called a sum of the products or sum of the midterms. With the, these equations, you can further simplify um, f like this uh, by applying those laws. You you have a, you know we introduce multiple laws in the previous lecture to simplify to simplify this one. For example, you can combine these um, terms. You can rewrite these two terms like a c bar plus c. C bar plus c is a one, a, b, and a one. And then you have a, b. Again, for the first, uh, um, again, for the first two terms, you can combine these two. Uh, you can rewrite it to a bar plus a, b bar, and c. The first one is a one, so you have a one multiply b bar c and then you have this term so by using those laws you can do some simplification but after the simplification these are not a canonical form these are just simplified um, logic expression or boolean expression for function g you can try it, uh, for function f i'm sorry you can try how to do that for function g yourself And this is the um, max term. The max term is the product. Each max term is a sum. It's also called a product of the sum. Uh, you can also try to simplify these equations. So in this way, uh, in this lecture, we talk about the canonical form. Uh, the canonical form can help you translate uh, Truth table to a Boolean function. Um, 
But after you have the canonical form, you need to apply those laws to do the simplification. Um, it's not easy for the computer to do that. So in the next lecture, we will talk about how to automatically simplify uh, these Boolean functions. Any question? If no question, we can stop today. So if you have uh, any function, you can stay here so that we can have the office hour. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, hi, this is Anthony. Uh, I did have one question uh, from the lecture last week on slide 22. Yes, last week. The uh, CMOS example. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. I kind of couldn't understand it. Yes. So, so my question here was uh, right at the beginning, f uh, is a function that's uh, uh, completely um, complemented. Was that just to make step one easier to show? It's because just to make the you know uh, the step one easier to show. Okay, that's that's what I wanted to confirm. And then also on the image to the right, uh, I couldn't follow the grouping labels on, on the image. They didn't seem to match the, the text description. The text description made sense to me, uh, but where they're at on the image, I thought didn't make sense. So let, let, let's try the first uh, step. For the first step, um, for the first step, uh, we have the, so you need to implement uh, I'm sorry, you need to invert the output, uh, which directly you have this app, right? You okay. just need to implement this part. Yeah, implement this part. Um, and uh, this is the pull down network. Um, for the pull down network, uh, C, you need to apply, continue to apply the, um, you know, the Morgan law here, uh, because for CMOS, everything should uh, in the complemented form. So this one will be, um, I'm sorry, uh, for the NMOS, everything should be uh, complemented form, but uh, you have already do the invert uh, already. So you can directly use them. So this is C, um, all the you can uh, you know connect them parallelly. This is C R D. Um, and then you have an and B. This this one this one should uh, um co uh, continue to end B. And B means you connect uh, you connect them uh, sequentially. So B. Uh, sequentially connected to this one, this part. And then you all A again, all means you connect them parallel. So these are one way, these are the separate way, and then you connect them parallel. Can you understand this part? I, yes, that, that makes sense. Um, I was just curious because it's it, it points at group one on the image, but it looks like it's pointing at the B uh, in in series. So the group uh, the group B means these two and these two. Okay. Again, you can continue to um, you know apply the Demogol law. You can see you have a um, circle here, which means that this is a C bar and a D bar. C bar and a D bar. When you apply the Demogol law, it's uh, C, R, D. And here you have a C, R, D. 
And the group A, I think, is the, you know, C, B, D. Um, oh, group A only, rep only represents the B. So you can see these B, they, these two are, uh, you know, uh, connected. Uh, Group one only is the only the single B. Again, let let's rewrite this this part as a uh, C. For the for the top one, you have a B bar. All Z. Um, Continue, you can continue to apply the De Morgan law. Um, so it's equals to B and the Z bar. So the Z is this one. You just really write everything, C and D as a Z. And you can see this is an end. So this, when you express end here, it's just, you know, these two are connected sequentially. Any question? So uh, the, I guess the last thing was X, X in the image is the output, right? Yes. F, okay. Yeah, I, that makes sense to me then. Yes. This is the output. Any other question? I also just wanted to uh, confirm that I understood uh, the assessments for the class. So the assessments are mostly going to be homeworks and the project, right? Yeah. I thought that we don't have exams. Is that what you said earlier? We don't have examination. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? No, that's it. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you.